All right, guys. Um, 12.6, select an appropriate display. Starts on page 909. The first thing is our real world link. It says the display shows the maximum speed of six animals. Go ahead and fill in one, two, and three based on that information. Pause the video now. All right, so the first one says use the bar graph to fill in the number of animals column in the table. And so you're just going to go through and you're going to look at, um, and you can use tick marks or you can actually use numbers. It's completely up to you. But I look and see, okay, the cat was going um, 30 miles per hour, so I'm going to put one over here for 30. The rabbit was going 35, so one for this one. The reindeer goes between 30 and 35, so I'm going to put it here. And then the squirrel goes between 10 and 15. And then the wild turkey goes, it looks like, exactly 15. And so I'm going to go ahead and pre-fill the zeros now for the ones that did not appear. And then I can use my actual numbers for the ones that did. Make sure that says a zero. All right. So, um, so it says, which display allows you to find the rabbit's maximum speed? Would you use this display where it's a bar graph? Or would you use this display, which is more like a, um, an intervals table? Um, obviously we would use the bar graph for that information because the bar graph shows each individual animal whereas the, um, the table does not show each individual animal. So I could, by looking at this graph I couldn't, or this table, I couldn't tell you which animal went how fast. Um, the next one would say, in which display is it easier to find the number of animals with a maximum speed of 15 miles per hour or less? So um, it would be the table here, because in the table, I'm able to figure out um, specific speeds. So I could say, okay, um, 15 and under would be this group right here, which all together would be two animals that can go 15 miles per hour or less. If there were any marks for the 1 through 5 and the 6 through 10, I would add those to the 2, but these all together are what I'm looking for. And it's 2 plus 0 plus 0, which is 2 all together. All right, so we have dif different types of displays. With um, We've got our bar graph, we have our box plot, we have our histogram, the line graph, and the line plot. So um, we've been working with all of these. You know, bar graph are one of the first ones that you would have learned back in elementary school. Um, box plot you learned this year with me. Histogram you learned this year with me. Line plot, I kind of wonder whether or not you had some previous access to that. I think you would have seen that. But I think that line graph, um, but you did get that from me. And line graph, I would also think you had some previous knowledge of that one. But either way, you've gotten all of this now. You know all of these and which ones are which. And so it says the data can often be displayed in several different ways. And the display you choose depends on the data and what you want to show. So going back to this original example, you could make a bar graph and say individual speeds if you wanted to know individual speeds. Or you could make a histogram, which is what we would use this data for. You could make a histogram if you just wanted to know what the fastest speeds were or how many went uh, a certain speed, under a certain speed or whatever. And then they give you these different guidelines to go by that you can use whenever you're deciding which display you want to use. And again, you can use several different displays for some, but sometimes there are certain ones that will give you more information and other ones that won't. So uh, number one says, which display allows you to tell the mode of the data? So looking at these two graphs, this is our line plot, and this is our histogram. And which one would you use to find the mode of the data? Hopefully you all understand that this is the way to go. Our line plot shows us the mode, whereas our box and whisker tells us our median. It tells us our highest and our, or our lowest and our highest amounts. And it even tells you your different quartiles in a spread, but it does not give us our mode. So A says, which of the above displays allows you to easily find the median of the data? Well, I guess I kind of just blew that one out of the water. Median 
is going to be here, easily here in our histogram. The reason I say easily is because it's actually one of our parts, our dots, in our histogram box plot. Sorry, am I saying histogram? I'm so sorry. Okay. It's five minutes in. I can't rewind this whole thing. So I'm going to reverse this and say, okay, not histogram. Just kidding, guys. I meant box plot. My daughter's laughing at me. All right. So box plot. Obviously, in my box plot, it even said it here. I just didn't read it all. Um, the box plot shows the median in our actual set of information here. It gives us our median. It also gives us our highest and lowest. All right. So box plot. Example number two, a survey compared different brands of hair shampoo. The table shows the number of first choice responses for each brand. Select an appropriate type of display to compare the number of responses. We want to be able to compare the number of responses for their favorite brands. So you would have to decide which type of graph would be appropriate when we're comparing a number of responses. So let's just go back to our little table here. And let's see. Um, so this one talks about specific, a number of items in specific categories. So that kind of sounds like one we'd want to use. Um, box plot, the variation of the set. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, so we don't want to use box plot. Histogram, the frequency. If we did the frequency, we wouldn't know which brand had what, what vote. So that wouldn't be a good one. Um, showing the change over time. Uh, this isn't over a matter of time. This is over a different amount of brands. And then shows how many times each number occurred. Th that couldn't be a bad idea, except that none of them are duplicated, so that doesn't really help us. Okay, And it doesn't identify which one is which. The only one that really is going to help us here is that bar graph. So we would show the bar graph um, because we could show each brand compared to the next, right next to each other. You know, brand A is like this, brand B is like this, brand C is like this, right? Brand D is somewhere around here, let's say, brand E is down here, so that kind of thing. Okay, you're able to compare and say, oh, this guy, C, he's the winner. He's the one that everybody like, likes the best. Number three says make the appropriate data display of the data. Sorry, make the appropriate display of the data. Draw and label horizontal and vertical axes at a title. Oh, okay, so we, if we're making that bar graph, which I was just doing, I guess I need to like really pay attention to my slides here. So if we are making the bar graph, um, we need to make it look right. We need to give it the titles. It's going to have a title for the whole thing. We're going to have a title for our horizontal line and a title for our vertical line. We're going to have to figure out what our numbers are going to be for our for this line in particular, we had to figure out if we were going to skip count by, you know, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, whatever. And then we need to decide what we're going to put along the bottom here to display those different categories. Okay, and we just used A, B, C, D, and E, and F because that's what they used. Then we've got um, draw the bar that represents, you know, this goes all the way up 35. This one's at 12, I think it was. This one was up at 42, this one was at 24, 8, and then maybe this one was 12 and that was 14, I don't know. Um, or 11, that was 11. So um, this gives us a really quick shot to say, oh yeah, C is obviously the one that people like the best. So what type of data are best represented in a bar graph? Explain below. Well, really, we could go back to our original display statistics here that tell us that we're going to use one that has specific categories. It's also a good, a good explanation to say if we want to compare information, okay? Comparing is a big deal in bar graph, okay? And then also if we want to um, have specific categories. Specific categories. All right. All right, so now you're going to try this on your own. It says the table shows the quiz scores for Mr. Vincent's math class. Select an appropriate type of display to allow you to count the number of students with a score of 85. Explain your choice and then make the appropriate display of the data. 
And again, when it says appropriate display of the data, you need to make sure you're giving the titles and doing things appropriately. So go ahead and pause the video now, and when we come back, we'll go over the answer. Now, my first thought was, oh, maybe I should make a box plot, but that's not going to tell me how many kids have specifically um, 85. Then I thought, okay, we could do a histogram because that gives us ranges, and again, that's not going to tell you how many have exactly 85. If it said more than 85, then that would be a good one to use, but it's exactly 85. Um, so what I did then is I thought, okay, well, what are my highest and lowest numbers? Because line plot really does make the most sense, but I didn't want to have to do more work than necessary if maybe I should be using a bar graph, okay? Um, so let's look. We've got 65 is our lowest number, and our highest number, someone got 100%. So if I'm going to make my um, line plot, then I'm going to start with 65, and I have to have 70, I have to have 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Um, then, and remember, you can't just, even if there wasn't an 80, let's say, even if no one had an 80%, I would still need to put it on here because you can't just skip count from 65 to 100 by fives and miss an entire section. So even if we didn't get a vote for one, we still need to do it. All right, now we're going to put in our X's above each of the values. So I would just start from here. Don't start based on your number line. Start based on your data set. So I'm going to say, okay, I've got one for 70. There's a second one for 70. There's another one for, there's one for 75. And kind of tick them off as you go there and get rid of them so you don't get messed up. Now, an, another thing is that you're supposed to make them nice and level. So if you were, you know, doing this, you need to make sure that they're kind of lined up. Um, so the next one is 80, and then we have 100, yay, and then we have 85, 85 again, we got a 65, boo, what a bummer, 65, 75, so I've done these, and I'm going to get caught up here, then I've got 85 and 95 and 90, then I've got 90 again, yay, 100 again, yay, Another 85, another 90, another 90, a 95, an 80, that's not bad, an 85, a 90, uh oh, I'm going to be going into my area here, 85, 90, darn it, um, I should have started lower, and then 75. All right, and so... Looking at this, I'll be able to say how many people got a score of 85 because I can say one, two, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six kids got an 85%. Um, so six is the number of kids um, that will show, well, I guess it's not really asking us to say that six. Um, so select the appropriate type of display to allow you to count it. I'd say line plot. You could have also done um, bar graph. It's not wrong if you did bar graph. Um, it just isn't quite a, uh, sorry about that. Um, so line plot, and then I did it. I need to, I need to title it, Mr. Vincent's math quiz. Okay, that's what that says. Trust me on this. All right, so Mr. Vincent's math quiz and it's shown on this line plot. All right. All right, guys, so that ends the video. If you um, want to do more examples, we'll be doing them in class. You can always ask questions. Um, but I think this is a pretty cut and dry one. I love, love, love this little display list here that helps figure out what to go with. But I think you guys also should have a grasp on these different types of displays because you've used them all, okay? So, all right, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you in school. Bye.